Hi, welcome to Dig Into China. I'm Dong Sheng. Since 2017, the Chinese Communist Party has laid out careful plans to eventually dominate the creation, application, and the dissemination of generative artificial intelligence programs that use massive data sets to train themselves to recognize patterns so quick that they appear to produce knowledge from nowhere. According to the CCP's plan, by 2020, China was supposed to have achieved iconic advance in AI models and methods, core devices, high-end equipment, and foundational software. But the release of OpenAI's ChatGPT in fall 2022 caught Beijing flat-footed. The virality of ChatGPT's launch asserted that US companies, at least for the moment, were leading the AI race and through a great power competition that had been conducted in private into the open for all the world to see. There is no guarantee that America's AI lead will last forever. China's national tech champions have joined the fray and managed to twist a technology that feeds on free wheeling information to fit neatly into China's constrained information bubble. Censorship requirements may slow China's AI development and limit the commercialization of domestic models, but they will not stop Beijing from benefiting from AI where it sees fit. China's leader Xi Jinping sees technology as the key to shake his country out of its economic malice. Then, even if China doesn't beat the US in the AI race, there's still great power and likely danger in it taking second place. Uh, Rev Go Zhong, a director for client engagement in the consulting firm Rhodium Group China Advisory Team, said, there is so much we can do with this technology. Beijing's just not encouraging consumer-facing interactions. We are not seeing a huge gap between the models Chinese companies have been able to roll out. It's not like all these tech innovators have disappeared. They are just channeling application to hard science. In its internal documents, the CCP says that it will use AI to shape reality and tighten its grip on power within its borders for political repression, surveillance, and monitoring dissent. We know that the party will also use AI to drive breakthrough in industrial engineering, biotechnology, and other fields the CCP considers productive. In some of these use cases, it has already seen success. So even if it lags behind US tech by a few years, it can still have a powerful geopolitical impact. There are many like-minded leaders who also want to use the tools of the future to cement their authority in the present and distort the past. Beijing will be more than happy to facilitate that for them. China's vision for the future of AI is closed sourced, tightly controlled, and available for export all around the world. In the world of modern AI, the technology is only as good as what it eats. ChatGPT and other large language models gorge on scores of web pages, news articles, and books. Sometimes this information gives the LLMs food poisoning. Anyone who has played with a chatbot knows they sometimes hallucinate or tell lies. Given the size of the text appetite, figuring out what went wrong is much more complex than narrowing down the exact ingredient in your dinner that made you sick. AI datasets are so vast and the calculations so fast that the companies controlling the models do not know why they spit out bad results, and they may never know. In a society like China where information is tightly controlled, this inability to understand the guts of the models poses an existential problem for the CCP's grip on power. A chatbot could tell an uncomfortable truth and no one will know why. The likelihood of that happening depends on the model it's trained on. To prevent this, Beijing is feeding AI with information that encourages positive social construction. China State Council wrote in its 2017 Next Generation Artificial Intelligence Development Plan that AI would be able to grasp group cognition and psychological changes in a timely manner, which in turn means the tech could significantly elevate the capability and the level of social governance, playing an irreplaceable role in effectively managing social stability. 
That is to say, if built to the correct specifications, the CCP believes AI can be a tool to fortify its power. That is why this month, the Cyberspace Administration of China, the country's AI regulator, launched a chatbot trained entirely on Xi's political and economic philosophy, Xi Jinping's thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era. Perhaps it goes without saying that ChatGPT is not available for use in China or Hong Kong. For the CCP, finding a new means of mass surveillance and information domination couldn't come at a better time. Consider the Chinese economy. Wall Street, Washington, Brussels, and Berlin have accepted that the model that helped China grow into the world's second largest economy has been worn out and that Beijing has yet to find anything to replace it. Building out infrastructure and industrial capacity no longer provides the same bang for the CCP's buck. The world is pushing back against China's exports, and the CCP's attempts to drive growth through domestic consumption have gone pretty much nowhere. The property market is distorted beyond the recognition. Growth has plateaued, and the deflation is lingering like a troubled ghost. According to Freedom House, a human rights monitor, Chinese people demonstrate against government policies in record numbers during the fourth quarter of 2023. The organization logged 952 dissent events, a 50% increase from the previous quarter. 78% of the demonstrations involved economic issues such as housing or labor. If there is a better way to control people, she needs it now. Ask the Cyber Administration of China's chatbot about these economic stumbles, and you will just get a lecture on the difference between traditional productive forces and new productive forces, buzzwords the CCP used to blunt the trauma of China's diminished economic prospects. In fact, if you ask any chatbot operating in China, it will tell you that Taiwan is a part of China. All chatbots collect information on the people who use them and the questions they asked. The CCP's elite will be able to use that information gathering and spreading to their advantage politically and economically. But the government doesn't plan to share that power with the regular Chinese people. What the party sees will not be what the people see. Kenneth D. Woksin, a professor at the University of Michigan and a senior China advisor to Deloitte, said, The Chinese have great access to information around the world, but it's always been a two-tiered information system. It has been for 2,000 years. In order to achieve this, the CCP has established a regulatory framework for AI that is adaptable enough to assess large language models as they are developed, yet stringent enough to govern their outcomes. Any AI intended for public use must undergo registration and approval by the CAC. This process entails disclosing information such as the datasets used for training and the tests conducted on the AI. The objective is to implement controls that accommodate certain facets of AI, while ideally granting the CCP ultimate authority over its creation and dissemination. Matt Sheehan, a researcher and a fellow at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, said, The real challenge of LLMs is that they are really the synthesis of two things. They might be at the forefront of productivity growth, but they are also fundamentally a content-based system, taking content and spitting out content. And that's something the CCP considers frivolous. Recently, the party has demonstrated a willingness to ruthlessly eliminate technology it deems frivolous or detrimental to societal harmony. In 2021, it prohibited individuals under 18 from playing video games on weekdays, halting the approval of new games for eight months, and later, in 2023, introduced regulations aimed at curbing public expenditures on video games. However, AI is more than just entertainment. It represents a crucial component of future computing. The CCP cannot overlook the widespread impact of OpenAI's chatbot, its significance in the US-China tech rivalry, or the potential of large language models to accelerate economic growth and political influence through rapid information processing.
For the CCP to wield a truly influential AI, it must develop models tailored to its objectives, highlighting the evident fact that China's tech giants are striving to catch up. Baidu, the e-commerce behemoth, boasts that its chatbots Ernie Bot, unveiled to the public in August, has garnered 200 million users and 85,000 enterprises' clients. To provide a context, OpenAI recorded 1.68 billion visits in March alone. Additionally, Moonshot's AI, a startup backed by Alibaba, introduced the Kimi chatbot in October. However, the recent emergence of ByteDance's Doubao bot, also launched in August, has overshadowed both Ernie bot and Kimi. Bloomberg reports that the Doubao has become the most downloaded bot in the country, largely due to its competitive pricing. The question is, which of these companies will actually make it to the money-making phase? The current price war is a race to the bottom, similar to what we've seen in the Chinese technology space before. Take the race to make electric vehicle. The Chinese government started by handing out the cash to any company that could produce a design, any design. It was a money orgy. Some of these cars never made it out of the blueprint stage. But slowly, the government stopped subsidizing design, then production. Then instead, it started to support the end consumer companies that couldn't actually make a car at a price point that consumers were willing to pay started dropping like flies. Eventually, a few companies started dominating the space, and now the Chinese EV industry is a manufacturing juggernaut. China's efforts to boost semiconductor production through the top-down strategies haven't been as successful as expected. While they can get universities and private companies on board with the state's plans, sometimes these entities move slower than the market demands. Until 2022, everyone was mostly concerned about the size of AI models, but now the focus has shifted to improving how these models are trained with data and the ability to generate new content. Simply put, China's approach often aims to keep pace with the current situation rather than predict future trends. There are indications that the definition of success in AI is evolving to prioritize models tailored for specific purposes. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman recently discussed in an interview with the Brookings Institution that at present, the large models require the most regulatory oversight. However, Altman suggested that the progress may surprise us, foreseeing the potential for smaller models to make significant impact. These targeted models could cater to specific business needs, as Altman explained. Drawing from years of scrutinizing how the CCP shapes the Chinese economy, Dewolskin speculated a future where such targeted models could be accessible to domestic companies in China but withheld from their foreign competitors. This scenario aligns with Beijing's historical inclination to leverage home field advantage as exemplified by Elon Musk's experience. While we may not fully endorse China's approach to AI, there are valuable lessons to be learned. Beijing has implemented the regulations addressing issues like deep fakes and authenticity labeling. Crucially, China's system prioritizes accountability, recognizing that the people create and are responsible for AI technology's actions. Given the rapid pace of AI advancement, a dynamic and consistent regulatory framework is imperative. While China's oversight may at times be excessive, the current regulatory landscape in the US lacks the necessary coherence. Although the Commerce Department recently initiated safety testing for models, an encouraging step, it fails short of comprehensive reform. China's technological advancements serve as a stark reminder that technological progress doesn't necessarily lead to societal liberation. It ultimately hinges on the intentions of those in control. The existence of the Xi Jinping thought chatbot serves as a cautionary tale. If China can develop such a tool for its own use, it could potentially replicate similar systems for authoritarian regimes seeking to control the flow of information within their societies. Already, certain Chinese AI companies, such as the state-owned iFly Tech, have faced sanctions from the US partly for employing their technology to survey the Uyghur population in Xinjiang. 
For some governments, the utility of such technology outweighs its generational gap compared to American counterparts. Regarding chatbots, while they may lack the breadth of human knowledge, they serve their intended purpose, censoring content and maintaining allegiance to the CCP. This underscores the peril inherent in AI competition. While China may not harness the extensive and diverse data sets available to the West due to its stringent restrictions on input and output, this does not preclude Beijing from cultivating specialized models with potential applications in fields like hard science and engineering. By doing so, China can regulate access to these advancements within its borders, extending control not only to individuals but also to multinational corporations. Consequently, Beijing could market tools of control, surveillance, and content generation to regimes seeking dominance over their societies and opposed to the interests of the US and its allies. We are at a pivotal moment in the global information landscape. If social media platforms have already segmented people into separate echo chambers, the she bot and shown that AI can take this phenomenon to an entirely new level. It serves as a stark warning. The digital barriers AI can erect in our minds will be more formidable than any physical barrier, hindering societies from collaborating towards a shared future. Beijing recognized this potential and is already leveraging it domestically. So why not extend this influence geopolitically? It's crucial to consider all the ways Beijing could capitalize on AI now before its impact is felt worldwide. The stability and the coherence of reality hinge on our understanding and the response to this emerging reality. Thank you for watching. Please like, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.